everyone, Matt here from Icebound Excursions and I want to talk to you about some of the electrical upgrades we've done in preparation for our season. We've got the snow falling outside today, I'm here in the trailer and we just got back from the Winnipeg Ice Fishing Show this past weekend where we had a great time meeting uh, people we haven't seen in a while, getting ready to uh, take people out on the lake for the uh, season here. So um, what I want to talk to you about today is how we managed to run all of our power in our snow bear for the graphs, the lights, the radio for the two days of the ice fishing show and we're still running power now and what, how we achieved that. But first, let's look at what we did on the outside of the bear. Um, just a simple add-on that I recommend every snow bear owner uses if you're ever plugging your machine in outside in the cold. So you can see we have added a three foot sacrificial piece of extension cord. So that's gonna give us three ports to plug into and then one to plug into the wall. And with that, uh, in the cold weather, we don't have to worry about um, the sheeting on the cables to the block heater, to the uh, battery charger getting brittle in the cold and cracking because those aren't moving when we're plugging in and the machine at the end of every day. So highly recommend you make that ad adjustment. The other thing we've done is we've taken that third port from there and we've run a block heater cord into the machine. I don't know if you can see it there, but this is gonna allow us to run accessories in the machine when we're plugged in outside. Uh, so whether or not it's a vacuum you wanna plug in or for one thing that I use is just a little heater just to keep the, uh, the chill out of the air when I'm working in the, in the trailer here because obviously you don't want to be running your propane in the trailer or uh, or just overnight to keep your floors dry. Uh, so a great thing to add on. I know uh, I've seen that uh, tip out there before. The next thing we did was we ran a extra fuse panel for all our electronics. So we have a dedicated fuse panel for electronics. This is going to allow us to get clean power to all our graphs and improve the image clarity. Um, yeah. With that, we've added SAE plugs at the front, at the dash, and that allows us to quickly plug in our Mega360 or Mega Live transducers uh, and get power and then move between bearers and plug in. And then that way it's kind of a universal connection. Uh, I use the same connection on my boat so I can quickly and conveniently move from one situation to the other without having to re-hardwire anything. So great tip there. Now, that doesn't explain how we managed to run the whole show off of the house battery and we still have charge today. So what we've done this year is we've added a lithium battery. So we've got a 100 amp hour lithium battery here. And that's gonna allow us to get longer runtime on our batteries and more consistent results out on the ice for running all of the electronics. The main thing that you need to be concerned about when charging or running lithium batteries is charging them. They do not charge below freezing. Uh, you can damage your battery if you try. As I mentioned earlier, we're plugging in and outside all the time. We're charging when the machine gets cold. So this battery has a built-in heater. That's gonna mean whenever you plug it in and the charger tries to charge it, if the battery knows that it's too cold, it's gonna direct that charge to an internal heater and warm that battery up until it's safe to charge and then it'll start charging the battery at that time. Okay, so that's why, but that's how we were able to get two days with uh, a runtime out of one battery and we're still going strong. The next thing that we had to do was the charger that comes with the snow bear, although it can charge different types of batteries, it isn't set up to charge different types of batteries at the same time. Uh, so if we switched completely over to lithium, um, we wouldn't have issues if we went completely over to AGM or lead acid. It works great. Um, it's a fantastic charger. But because we're currently running lead acid as our cranking battery and lithium as our charging battery, we need a charger that is suited to the task. So we've got the Minkota Precision Charger and we can choose the battery type for each bank in the charger, allowing us to charge our lithium and our starting lead acid battery at the same time. So hopefully that helps. Look forward to seeing you guys out on the ice.